to share something with you today because we've been seeing this May in the shops since we've been in Croatia um, because it takes up more shelf space than milk this yogurt or yogurt but it's drinkable and people ro like roll around with these yogurts in big like one liter bottles 750 ml bottles like it's coca bloody cooler maybe it's the equivalent of like a farmer's union iced coffee in Adelaide oh, yeah. South Australia okay. so we thought we'd give it a little um, try so I've cracked the lid in advance I think it's gonna taste like yogurt but it's super the consistency is like milk or cream yeah Smells like really yogurt. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, what the fuck, man? <laughs> you should try it. <laughs> First, we gotta fuel up before we get historical. <laughs> So we're in Sarajevo and we're going to do a crash course in history. I'm going to try and reduce 100 years of conflict into a minute and a half. Start timing now. Um, in a serious way though, this is the Latin Bridge, which is the place for the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, who was the heir to the Austrian-Hungarian throne. The Habsburgs who ran Austria-Hungary and the rest of Europe were in power for like 800 years. And this region, as well as being kind of controlled by the Ottoman Empire, then fell under the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. So in the early 1900s, this rebel group assassinated Franz Ferdinand to try and get rid of the Austrian influences in this kind of Slavic, Croat, Bosniak, Serbian region of the world. Um, with that assassination, World War I started, and ironically, Bosnia who, or the rebel group with Bosnian Serbian who attacked Franz Ferdinand ended up having to fight for the Austrian-Hungarian Empire in World War I. At the end of World War I, the dissolution of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire left this place in a kind of power vacuum because the Austrians had been in charge for so long and the first Yugoslavia was developed, where the first Yugoslavia was really run by a monarch in Serbia. So again, Bosnia, Croatia came under a monarchy of a country that wasn't their own. Mm. That kind of lasted but didn't until the Germans came through and occupied the region during World War II. And at the end of World War II, they were like, enough, we've had enough, get rid of these Germanic pricks. <laughs> and the second Yugoslavia was born under Tito. So Bosnia, Croatia, Serbia, Slovenia, Macedonia and Montenegro joined together because they had more things in common um, to try and have a united body and that was Yugoslavia under Tito who was an interesting guy because he wasn't like the horrific dictators that you see with like Stalin, Mussolini. Um, he was kind of beloved. There's this cool photo of him in the White House um, in this like white suit and he's there with Nixon and cigars have been banned in the White House but he's there with Nixon smoking this fat cigar having a chat so he was kind of accepted by the Western world he was accepted by Stalin and he ran Yugoslavia pretty happily until his death in the 1980s so his rule lasted for 35 years and that kind of brings us to the modern day conflicts because once Yugoslavia breaks or the end of communism in all of Europe Yugoslavia breaks down as well and the socialist regime that had worked here pretty successfully for all that time those six countries that joined to make Yugoslavia started to want to have their own individual identity again. And so these series of wars for independence happened. The Slovenians happened first and they got out of Yugoslavia, then the Croatians, and then the Bosnian war started. And these were all called the Yugoslav wars. But Bosnia was really, really vicious though. There was genocides that happened here because there were Croatian influences and Serbian influences that wanted this territory because Bosnia lies in the middle. So the Serbs came in and there were Serbian um, Serbian like, identifying people who wanted this area. So the Serbs came in and started committing these like horrible genocides against the Bosniak people trying to claim this land as their own. And this went in into the mid-1990s when eventually the ceasefire and it all came to an end and now all six countries are individual independent republics. <sighs> so it all bloody happens. But that's what we're looking at today. And it all started here. And it all started here.
it was a lot. Um, but I think it's good that it was a lot. Um, I sort of think of things I see about World War II, they sort of, you feel distant from them um, because they happened so long ago. But the interesting thing about this is that it happened in the 90s. We were alive then and um, interestingly, like I reflected on having lunch today and the guys at the table next to us very well could have been um, here in Sarajevo in the, in the time of the siege. So it's, it's very real and you're sort of like living and walking amongst it when we're here in Sarajevo. Yeah, recent history. Yeah. Recent history. One of the lessons that I sort of took from it as well as a nice little quote is was on one of the on one of the plaques it was the indifference of the international community helped the Serbian troops. Mm. Um, and that's an interesting thing to remember, particularly for us like we're Australians, we have like a really easy life. Um, and it's very easy to turn off from international conflict and um, and shit that's going on outside of our borders and across across the ocean. So um, it's just a nice reminder that you know, we are involved and, and we have got a part to play, even though we might be on the other side of the ocean. A social contract with humanity. Yeah. Mm, interesting one. Srebrenica Gallery exhibition um, and like there's a few thoughts one it's like really well executed so as a, like a museum experience it was really like clear wasn't too long um, very easily accessible information well explained um, and really moving um, but two so the massacre that happened in 1995 I just kept thinking like about the big day out Line up in 1995 yeah. and how like and yeah. like bands and like when you think about the 90s for me from my perspective it's like Backstreet Boys and Five and NSYNC and Spice Girls and those kinds of experiences um, and that just speaks to like like right now this is something that didn't that happen specifically here but there's still ethnic minorities in places like China and India where they're still experiencing persecution while we're out on this holiday and it's just like overwhelming and. You're talking before about the international community was we should be more involved, but like it's just fucking endless. And then the other part is, you know, this was in 1995. Six years later, two two thousand and a bit Americans died in September 11, and the um, wide-reaching coverage of that mm, yeah. incident compared yep. to this incident a few years before, when over 8,000 people died in a three-day massacre that the UN were involved in and not stopping yeah. and it was Bosnian Muslims and the, the comparative nature of media coverage and the way that the world deals with or the Western world deals with things like that happening. Mm. It's just, it's all too yeah. much. It's all too much. Hello, good morning. Uh, we're here at the Tunnel of Hope or the Tunnel of Life. Um, here in Sarajevo. Um, we don't actually know much about it yet. It's um, a big part of um, the the siege in here in Sarajevo in 392 to 95, so we'll, we'll find out a little bit more about it. Uh, so we're going into the Tunnel of Hope now. So the idea of the tunnel is that the only way to sort of get out of Sarajevo during the siege was to run across the airport the intent of the, t and that was really, really risky. They had spotlights on it and people were getting shot and just picked off as they ran across. And there was barbed wire sort of barriers along the way as you went. Um, we're gonna go into this tunnel and the tunnel was built to sort of help those people out so that there was a safe way to get out of Sarajevo if they needed to get to, to the free area of Bosnia. <laughs> Thank you. 
here we've got what's called a Sarajevo rose. And what the people of Sarajevo did with all the mortar shell wounds that were done to the pavements and the streets around the city was start to paint them in red um, to memorialise what happened here in Sarajevo. And uh, they, they take on a shape, something like a rose, and they call them the Sarajevo roses. We are driving into Sniper Alley. It became known as Sniper Alley because these buildings were where the Serbian snipers set up during the siege of Sarajevo. The camera doesn't show it, but these buildings are littered with bullet holes from the snipers during this time. It became infamous as a dangerous location for the Bosnian locals to traverse. Signs were posted saying, Watch out! Sniper! People would either run fast across the street or wait for a UN armoured vehicle to walk behind. During the siege, these snipers wounded 1,030 people and killed 225. Of that 225, 60 were children. We're getting these views over Sarajevo because it's our third attempt trying to get up to the abandoned bobsled track. It is too steep and we have had to turn back. Yeah. The well, Olympics were held here in... It just got sketchy. 1984. Well, um, before all of the troubles. Oh God, that's a place. Ugh. So now we're going down and we saw a cable car. So now we're gonna try and find the cable car to come on up and give it another go. Attempt four, stay tuned. Let's try it. Is it open? So the Sarajevo Brewery, the skin is out of control. It just breaks out in these weird rushes. I think it's the detergents and the different pillows all the time. Anyway, we need a reset. Um, and the Sarajevo Brewery is a two minutes walk to the cable car. Yeah. But that drive was hectic. We need to give the people what they want. The favorite segment. Beer reviews with Woodsy or any alcoholic beverage reviews with Woodsy, Cat and Woodsy. We're trying to change the mood of the afternoon. We've got a blonde and a dark. Yeah. Mm. 250 euro. Okay, so it's light, it's sharp, and it is basic, like a blonde bitch. <laughs> Do you reckon it's gonna taste like Guinness? No chance. Oh, it's sweet. It's molasses -y. It's a dark beer, like the dark corner of your soul. Not sure quite what's going on there. It's dark like the corners of this pub. Oh, yeah. Dark like the cloud that has been cast over our afternoon because we tried three times to get up to the top of the bobsled hill. Yeah. Fourth time a charm. So much of what we do is dealing with heights and small spaces. We've hit both of those today, both of which get the old ticker racing gar. It's like eerily quiet. Yeah. Genuinely uncomfortable. Like the sound of the um, wind gushing. It's freaking out. Yeah. It's like. Oh, oh. Okay, now we're rocking back and forth. I shouldn't have had a pint of beer. It's made me feel up for fear. I spent money just to close my eyes. I shouldn't have had a pint of beer. It's made me feel up for fear. I spent money just to close my eyes. There better be a prize. Up at the top for us to stop. Then I never want to come back down. It's gonna make me brown. I've changed the tune to this song. Hope this doesn't take long. <sighs> I've run out of ideas. 
I'm like, Tyler, why are you so uncomfortable? And he's like, because I'm a friend of mine. It's <laughs> since when? He's like, for years, my entire life, the entire time you've known me. And then what did you accuse me of? You just take the spotlight, so it's always <laughs> you, your fear comes first. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, it'll fucking destabilize the cable card cords. It is 1.3 kilometres long. There are 13, 13 turns. 13 turns. It was used during the 1984 Winter Olympics here in Sarajevo. Since abandoned. And we're at the top of Mount Trebevich, which one, is one point, go. 1.6 kilometres. You always got to pipe in, don't you? Just when there's a stat. <laughs> Wasn't me that looked them up. Selfie. <laughs> and that's us finishing up in Sarajevo. Please make sure to click the thumb, subscribe, say hello to us in the comments and take care of yourselves. Until we see you next time. We'll see you next week. On Never Not. Yeah. <laughs>